so they tried to come up with a purpose for the waterways. They did shut them down when they reopened them. They realised you can use them for pleasure cruising. And there is some things still used the canal. I know one, there's one company that delivers coal along the canals. To the right hand side, as I'm walking down, I'm right, the, the mill is gone. It's on. As we looked out up the river, on the left hand side, where the, I said the ladder was, that's where the globe mill is. was the whole site reached right round so I'm not sure what the chimney was behind me like I said but it looks like it was all part of the same thing and the weir was part of Globe Ironworks too so there we got there in the end that was important because I got a bit lost where I said there is some gas meters where I will say there is some gas meters because this is the prequel I'm trying to layer it this time the most important fact i'm filming the rain i'm going to do that on purpose it's complete but what happens is it starts to rain and then slowly as the video goes on it's heavy rain and it's an attempt to show you what manchester really is like or when people have worked on these canals they were usually in the pouring down rain it didn't stop just because of pouring down rain People used to go outside in the rain all the time. They were much more used to it, working outside in the rain. You know, we were probably a bit tougher. They say that people get tougher the further you go back. You know, we're a little bit soft now, but we seem to live longer than ever. So who knows how that works. Yeah, I didn't make a mistake. Um, it is sort of layered and the way it will be released this is actually the last video so instead of saying this is the end the idea is here as I clean up little bits of information I can explain to you little bits of information it won't make sense until you watch the whole playlist and then if you watch this bit again even it will all tie in it's like a loop there's gonna be in total it will be six videos um, to introduce the Ashton and then I'll do an exit including the Rochdale canal like I said just seven videos because it's so sharp and then we'll add the Peak District and more information as time goes on I'm going to go back to the Bridgewater canal uh, get some more information there so the goal was there and the gasometers would have been on my left hand side, opposite the mill with the chimney that we saw, where well, we'll be next to, as I'm speaking now, this one. Uh, we'll walk through, we're going to Peak Forest Canal. It will go as far as Ducking Field, and I don't think I mentioned that, that was the idea. The Huddersfield Narrow Canal was abandoned in 1944, so probably during the war for carrying ammunition and defence. The Peak Forest Canal had ceased to be used by the start of the Second World War, 1939. The Ashton Canal was unnavigable by 1962. However, the Peak Forest Canal Society was formed and working with the British Waterways Board, the local councils through which the canals ran, and the Inland Waterways Association, the Ashton Canal and the Lower Peak Forest Canal were reopened in 1974, bringing the junction back to use, into use, uh, actually being used for things. campaign the restoration of the Huddersfield Narrow Canal began the same year it was not complete until 2001 it was such a mess uh, that was helped by public funding the uh, Millennium Commission which is the lottery Ashton Canal Warehouse um, we get some information about that as well it's, it's a museum now 
but was obviously the warehouse they used to store goods there um, it was all part of the service of the shipping companies they had warehouses so you could have you know a certain amount of stuff delivered every single week um, the mills could just leave, you know fill up the, the warehouse with their own goods and then the warehouse distributed the goods throughout the towns um, along the waterways they used tugboats to go up and down rivers up and down the Mersey and the Ribble and the, all, the, all over the place there was boats Uh, the Ashton Canal Warehouse, <clears throat> that's at the Portland Basin, I said it was 1834, I got one fact right, by the Canal Company, <laughs> made me laugh, replacing the early warehouse uh, to the east, I'm not going into any more details than we already have, there was another warehouse, this is basically an upgrade to cope with the Industrial Revolution, we understand that much I hope by now, that things get improved with time and go bigger with time. Obviously, this went out of use for a bigger one to service roads and trains. It's three stories high. It had three shipping holes. The northern elevation, which opens to the road, is two stories high. Trap doors allowed split loading and unloading between the road and the three canal arms. The roof was flat, allowing increased storage. The building we see today is the result of 1998 restoration. It has a water wheel. Uh, the museum is currently closed. So when, when it reopens, we'll take a look at the water wheel. Like I say, we can add to this playlist in the future. Uh, so we'll just keep adding to it. The internal high system was powered by an external water wheel. The canals usually power the water wheel. The head race was taken from the canal, there you go, and the tail race fed down to the River Tame. It's 33 feet, 10 meters below. The high uh, brass shot water wheel was constructed in 1841 to a suspension design introduced by Thomas Hughes and William Fairburn, you can search those two names and had rim gearing, so that means it can't spin backwards and it can't slip basically a cog, massive cog wheel it cost £1,078 24 feet, 7.3 metres in diameter and 0.9 metres 3 feet in width produced 15 horsepower which is the equivalent of 11 kilowatts of electricity told you I can do conversions power was transmitted by a line shaft using a suspension system akin to spokes on a bicycle it's a, yeah, it's like a, it's a gear mechanism but in the middle that allowed the wheel to be lighter than the wooden one it replaced taking the power off the rim rather than from the axle that reduces the stress on the gears ah so the cogs on the rim rather than the center right so it's like a tire on a bike having the gears instead of the center of the wheel and then the shaft is in the middle to get more torque Right, so it's the opposite way around to how it should be. So we'll have to have a look at that. Uh, the axle reduces stress on the gears, uh, less power loss. So you see, they're still working on water wheels, but then steam power comes in. So th this is at the very forefront of what they were doing with water power. They've, they flipped the cog round to get a more efficient system. Now, that's never happened to bicycles, but these are the sort of innovations that I like to find out about. So that's a very interesting water wheel, probably a very rare one. So we definitely will have to see it at some point. Uh, wooden Canal Boat Society is situated there. They're the original old wooden canal barges that are my favourite. I like the wide, full-size ones. But they're very rare now. Oh, you, you don't really see them. The narrow boats a different sort of ply you know well-made materials some are metal 
Um, Kimpshin is located at the southern edge of the Ashton underlying Ashton Canal. Uh, most of these structures are Grade 2 listed. Cavendish Mill, the former cotton spinning mill, we'll see that pioneered by Edward Potts. And I don't really want to carry on much more because, like I say, it was confu it'll be confusing as you go down. Um, literally going to rhyme off the specifications now. So one of the things, um, narrow canals. The Ashton Canal is 6.8 miles in length. It has 18 locks. The maximum boat dimensions. The length of your boat is 21.79, 21.8 meters. That's 71 feet, 71 and a half foot in length, five inches. Uh, the width is 2.13 meters. That's seven foot. They seem much thinner than that, and the canal looks much thinner than that. But like I say water does deceive the eye a bit. Um, the draft, not point nine meters, uh, three feet. I think that's the height. The draft. Oh, it says how much it sinks into the water. Sorry, and the headroom, one point eight two meters, five foot eleven. So. That's, yeah, that's the boats. Yeah, they, uh, they sink into the water, obviously. If you go more than a metre under the water, you might have a bit of trouble getting, you know, dragging it along because they are refurbished, these canals. Some people, you know, you, you go a bit heavy and you go when the water's a bit low, you don't open the lock fully at certain basins. You know, you get grounded quite often, but you have to deal with that if you're into boats. I'm sure a lot of debris gets wrapped around your propeller as well. Uh, pollution people go on about but it's mainly uh, pondweed it really does bugger up your engine <laughs> principal engineer is credited as Benjamin Outram so whoever built most of the other sections they've obviously fallen out with that person not sure if it was Jessup but I'm supposed to be sticking to the facts so Benjamin Outram is credited as the principal engineer but we have learned that he did only really finish off the canal. Um, do, do, do. Date of the act is 1792, it's actually date of first use, Nine, 1796, date completed 1797, date closed 1961, restored 74. The start point is Ashton on the line. End point is Juicy Street, Manchester. They tend to do that. It's not from the base, it's from the top. Uh, the branches, Hollingwood, Stockport, Islington, Huddersfield, Narrow, Peak Forest, and also Cotsdale Canal. I'll just give you a rundown of from Juicy Street, it joins the Cotsdale Canal, uh, then it goes Thomas. Telford Basin, Store Street Aqueduct. As, as I'm rhyming them off as we go up, these are the things you'll come across. The A665 crosses on a bridge. One Ancoat Locks, that's your first lock. Then you'll have your Islington Branch Canal system. Ancoat Locks 2 and 3. And then Keswick Locks 4 and 6. Actually, filmed the boat going through those. Uh, lock two. Seven is Bezic lock. You've got the A60. Ten. And the A636 crosses over bridges. Clayton locks. Eight and ten. Stockport branch would have been five miles long, which is no longer there. Clayton locks at Clayton Junction. Locks 13 to 16 at Clayton locks at Crabtree Swing Bridge. Clockhouse Swing Bridge, Grimshaw's Swing Bridge, Fairfield Locks. Right, so then we're up to the Hollywood Branch Canal section. A636, the main road to after the underline goes through. Hollywood Branch Canal would have left M60 Ring Road.
it does go over the canal. Do you know what? I've not filmed that. I was unaware of that. But look into that. That is where there'll be a culvert. Right, so in the very last bit, I mean, as I said, there's going to be seven videos in all. There'll be everything that is missing. So, that's Islington Branch Canal, Stockport Branch. We'll finish off the gas amateurs and show you the ones I thought with the gas amateurs and one massive old gas drum. Peak Forest Canal, obviously, but we'll get this M60 bridge. There's an A614 C bridge, Peak Forest Canal. So just so all the information's there, we know it goes all the way up. And Heaton Norris. There was also a line to Heaton Norris. Okay, take care everyone. As if by magic, I'm back at the top of the hill. Right, so enjoy the next few videos about these three canals. It's the Manchester and Aston Underline Canal Company. Peak Forest Canal Company and the Huddersfield Canal Company originally. They all start in the Portland Basin as we get the sun set. Manchester UK, please like my videos, produced, directed by Stephen Goddard.